If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. In order to find the flux through the whole surface of the cube in part A, what we want to do is apply Gauss's law. So let's take a look at that law. So Gauss's law says that the electric flux is equal to the net charge that is located inside a surface divided by a constant. And to get an idea of how to apply this law, maybe what we could do is draw a picture of this scenario where we have a charge located at the center of a cube. So we've labeled the charge with a capital Q and then the surface would be this cube that is enclosing the charge. And hopefully we can see that the total charge inside that cubic surface is simply capital Q. It's simply the amount of charge that was stated in the problem. So really all we have to do for part A is just plug in the total charge. Now it's in microcoulombs, so we're going to actually have to convert that into coulombs by making sure that we multiply it by 10 to the minus 6. And then on the bottom we have this constant whose value is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. A bit of a strange unit. But that's all there is to it for part A. We can just pick up our calculators and divide. And when we do that, we get approximately 1.92 times 10 to the 7. And then the units will be as follows. The coulomb on top and this coulomb squared will cancel. And then the newton meter squared are actually going to come up to the numerator. So we'll have newton meter squared per coulomb. That's the standard unit of electric flux. So this would be the correct answer to part A. Now, for part B, it turns out there's a little bit of a trick here. It's asking us to calculate the flux through each face of the cube. Now, we have to keep in mind that this charge is located, according to the question, exactly in the center of the cube. So, because it's located exactly in the center, that means that whatever electric field lines are projecting through each face will be the same. So, if we, for example, had three electric field lines that were traveling through the top face of the cube, that would necessarily mean that three electric field lines would be passing through the right face, and then the same for the bottom face, and so on. The basic point is that the total amount of electric field, and therefore electric flux, will be equally distributed among the six faces of the cube. So all we have to do is take the total electric flux that we determined in part A, and simply divide it by six. Again, since the electric flux will be evenly distributed among the six surfaces of the cube, and that's only because the charge is in the center of the cube. So let's take the flux from part A and just divide it by six. And when we do that, we should get roughly 3.2 times 10 to the sixth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. So this is the correct answer to part B. Now, in the final part of the question, we are told that the charge is no longer at the center of the cube. And so we want to kind of pick it up and move it so that it's off the center. Maybe we could kind of slide it over to the left side here and put it in its new position there. And then we have to determine if our answers to part A and B would change. Now remember, for part A, the electric flux was equal to the total charge inside the surface divided by that constant. Now even though we move that charge over to the left, there is still the same total amount of charge within that cubic surface. We haven't changed that. Of course, if we actually move the charge outside of the cube, that would make a difference. But as long as that charge Q is inside the cubic surface, then the total electric flux would not change. So the answer to part A would not change, but the answer to part B will change. And the reason is because the charge is no longer in the center. Remember, when it was in the center, the flux was evenly distributed across the six faces of the cube. But now that it's closer to one edge compared to the other, the flux will change through each surface. For example, because this charge is closer to the left edge, there will be more electric field lines passing through that left edge, and so we would have a greater electric flux through that side. On the other hand, the electric field lines through the right side would be fewer because they kind of spread out as they move away from the charge. And since there are fewer lines, then there will be a smaller electric flux through the right face of this cube. So the answer to part B would definitely change if we move this charge off center.
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.